Good, good morning, and welcome to Matinair on Air. So very, very happy to have you along. Jane Matinair, Greg Bach, Calvin on the board, coming to you live from our studio in beautiful downtown Waukesha. If you ever want to join us, you can call or text at 844-967-2789-844-96. Party. That's right, Greg Bach. Party or pasty. Pasty. That works, too. Or leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Very, very busy show today. We have a guest right up, right away to kick things off. Next hour at the top of the hour, we're going to go beyond the cheese, Greg Bach. Beyond the sausage? Beyond the cheese in Wisconsin. Yeah. And highlight another really important industry, <laughs> maple syrup producers. There we go. And then we're going to talk about the Berkebeiner coming up at 1130. To get us going, though, as we begin the show, he is a friend of the show, a political consultant, and a highly, highly knowledgeable person. Joseph Hecke is here. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm honored to be making, I think, my first appearance on Matt and Air on Air. I had some alternate branding and naming ideas. <laughs> and as that intro music hit, I had I gotta I gotta ask, was Jane Says one of the potential titles, or did that get flagged by legal as a copyright issue? <laughs> There, I, there were a bunch of things that were getting kicked around. This yeah. was kind of a quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have a whole lot of time to have numerous long involved meetings about what we're going to call it. And oh, uh, Rebecca, no. Re- Rebecca was the one who came up with Matt and Air on air. It's like, that's it. Yeah, that's what we'll go. Well, with. Whatever, whatever you call it, I may not have been on the show yet, but I've been listening and you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you, to you. Thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate it. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on, there are many reasons to have you on, but numbers, all the economic numbers and perception versus reality. And I thought it would be a good time to compare numbers under the different administrations. So numbers under the Trump administration and numbers under the current Biden administration. And I kind of jumped off on this after I saw this article about Representative Nancy Mace, who is from uh, South Carolina, (laughs) right? She's a great state of South Carolina, great state of South Carolina said recently that under former President Trump, essentially everything in the world was better by every measure and every barometer. Nancy May says, that's what I hear day in and day out. It's a little harrowing before we get into those numbers to think that there are people in the halls of Congress who get their information and their data and their facts based on what people say to them. This is right? what she's not, hearing. And not yeah. like, this is what she's not hearing. like economists. Yeah, she's got Republicans at events coming up to her and saying everything was better under Trump. And she goes, oh, okay, well, then that must be true and doesn't have the intellectual curiosity to go and actually check the numbers. So I've got six numbers and we could take them one by one. Great. Uh, Where where do you want to start? Is there one that's most interesting to you? Well, let's talk about jobs first and foremost. Sure. So since Joe Biden became president, the U.S. economy has created 14.3 million jobs. That is the most jobs ever in a first term under any administration, Democrat or Republican, in American history. The total four-year number for Donald Trump was the U.S. economy lost 2.7 million jobs. So that is back of the envelope. That's a 17 million job swing administration to administration. Now, we want to be factual and we want to be fair. Yes. Okay. Yes. Part of what happened under Trump was he badly mismanaged a global pandemic. Okay. So even if you just take January of 2017 until February of 2020, the job growth rate in the country under Trump was 1.5%. For the three plus years that Joe Biden has been president, I think we're like three years in a week at this point, the monthly job creation percentage has been 2.4%. So even if you take out the pandemic, the Joe Biden economy has created more jobs than the Donald Trump economy. That's the employment numbers. The flip side of that is of course, Unemployment numbers. U.S. unemployment under Joe Biden is at 3.6%. Under Donald Trump, again, removing the pandemic was 4%. So 
when it comes to what Joe Biden always points out is, is not a number and it's not just a paycheck. There is a dignity that comes with work, with having a job, with parents being able to get out of bed, look their kids in the eye and know that they're going to get them on the bus to school or, or, you know, or if it's a weekend, they're going to go in and they can be proud of the job that they have and feel good about their worth. That is the quiet dignity that comes with having a job. And there are more American families who are able to tell that story and live that American dream under Joe Biden's economy than that than could under Donald Trump's economy, full stop. And I think, Joe, it's important to remind folks because a lot there's the argument is going to be, well, the, we lost all these jobs because of the pandemic, because everything shut down in March of 2020. And that's why millions of jobs were lost. Well, yes, uh, that is partially true. But Joe Biden has gotten those two point six million plus 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 back. Right. Indeed. And yes. And, and there's just no question about it. And that's where some of the policy choices that the Biden administration made have really paid off. Right. And that is things like the American Rescue Plan, the bipartisan infrastructure plan, uh, things that have saved consumers money because we, we long ago learned that the Ronald Reagan trickle down didn't work. That's not how you grow. An it's economy. never that's worked. Not a, that's not a healthy economy. Uh, during the pandemic, I actually had an opportunity to participate in a weird roundtable, unlike anything I've ever done before, with a bunch of really, really smart economists. And they changed my thinking on this way more than my 8 a.m. Economics 101 class at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater did by really explaining the power of the velocity of money in an economy. The, the strength of an economy is directly correlated to how fast money circulates. So if I pay Jane for a good or a service, and then Jane turns around and pays Greg for a good or service, and Greg turns around and pays somebody else, the more that that money is circulating and the faster it is moving is called the velocity of money. That is certainly in the 21st century, the sign of a healthy economy. And so some of the things that the Biden administration, Democrats in Congress were able to do to boost consumer spending, ratcheted up the velocity of money. And that is why the U.S. economy has been doing so well compared, especially to other countries around the world, right? Like that's the other barometer. So we've got a difference between the Donald Trump economy and the Joe Biden economy, even taking out the last nine months of his term in the global pandemic. We can also look you know, at other Western industrialized manufacturing economies around the world who are having far more of a challenge taming inflation, having less of a quick comeback on things like gross domestic product, which maybe segues into the next one that I'll, I'll throw out, throw out the next numbers, gross domestic product. GDP. Which is GDP. It is sort of, you know, it's, they report it quarterly. It, you know, it is not the velocity of money, which I just made a case for, but it is sort of the like, how do you know if an overall economy is growing? You look at gross domestic product. Under Joe Biden, gross domestic product has grown by 3.4%. If you take the full four-year term of Donald Trump, it grew at 1.8%. So basically half of the growth in gross domestic product. If you take out, again, those nine months and you just, just judge Trump, on January of 2017 up to February of 2020, gross domestic product grew by 2.8%. So better, yes, no question. Sure. But still not as healthy an economy or robust an economy as the economy under Joe Biden. And How if, about that? If, and if I remember correctly, Joe, one of Donald Trump's major complaints about the Obama economy was that the GDP never broke, what, 4%. And that was Donald right. Trump's brag that he was going to break. There's no reason it shouldn't be at 4% and I'm going to get it to be 4%. And no, you didn't make it up to 4%. He didn't quite get there, did he? No. Came up a little short. Just, just a scooch. <laughs> just a scooch. If yep. you're just joining us, political consultant Joe Zapecki and friend of the show is here. And we're talking numbers. 844, economic numbers. 844-967-2789. 844-967-2789. Tony on the live stream, Bidenomics versus trickle down has a clear winner. Yeah, definitely right about that. And Tom from LA has been waiting on the line. Good morning, Tom. Thank you for joining us. What do you want to say? 
Good morning, Jane. Uh, good morning. Um, uh, first off, we the people ultimately are the government, and we must never forget that. Um, second, exactly what Joe is saying. I mean, it's very, very simple. Joe Biden and Bidenomics is results-oriented, and Joe Biden is a workhorse. He, he puts his head down, and, he, and the, the Biden administration gets things done, shows it with the actual results. All the other candidate, the chaos candidate, is is a is a show horse. Oh, that's all. That's it. He, he's all. What do they say? All hat, no cattle. Um, that's that's exactly what Trump is. Trump is a show horse. Joe Biden is a workhorse, and Joe Biden is results oriented. Thanks a lot, Tom. Always appreciate you calling. Certainly, certainly grateful that you like listening. Really, really do appreciate that. If you want to check in with us, 844-967-2789. Was that his major complaint, Donald Trump's complaint, Joe, about the Obama economy? Was that was the GDP? Because if I remember correctly, it wasn't going gangbusters when Trump was elected, but it wasn't terrible. The economy was he didn't inherit terrible numbers like Barack Obama inherited or Joe He's, Biden inherited. Right. Right. That, that's the difference is what these respective presidents in the 21st century have inherited. And at the end of the Bush presidency, we had the Great Recession. Obama took over and then had, you know, to that point, unprecedented job growth as America over two terms of Obama sort of fought its way back. Trump comes in with a pretty healthy economy and then leaves at you know a very bad point within the pandemic. And that's the other thing that people forget is just how rough the economy was in January of 2021. Oh, yeah. We, we talk a lot about you know January 6th and the big lie. We forget how precarious our economic position was. I'm sure after the break, we'll talk more about how Joe Biden got us back to where we are now. We're going to keep this going. Steve and I see you on the line. Don't hang up. Stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. On air, Jane Matnair, Greg Bach, Sweet Cal B on the board, coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. We are joined by our friend and political consultant, Joe Zapecki, is here, and we're talking economic numbers and comparing the economies under the Trump administration under the uh, as opposed to the uh, current Biden administration. Um, we were going to talk about business investment, Joe, and uh, and new business starts. So let's compare those two things under these two administrations. And let me just preface this by saying, I think these are my favorite of all the numbers, because what is, what does Donald Trump want you to believe that he is the greatest businessman Ever. in the history of the world. Ever. He knows more, he's forgotten more about business than everyone else in America has ever known. And you hear from so many, uh, uh you know, conservatives, both of, what I would say, well-intentioned conservatives across the spectrum to like MAGA Republicans, they all tend to get really lost in the like, what we need is a business person in the White House. They know what business needs. They they know that businesses create the jobs and that's where people make their money. Okay, so let's look at the business numbers. Right? Oh, that's Business investment. So this is like companies large and small putting money back into their businesses to try to grow. Under Joe Biden, business investment has grown by 5%. Okay. Or, sorry, 5.4%. Okay. So almost 5.5%. Over the full Trump term, business investment grew at a rate of 2.7%. That, seems, that seems lower. It is lower. It's like half. It's literally half. Now, again, we're going to be as fair as possible to Mr. Trump. For reasons passing understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Just because I'm in a good mood today. If you take out 
that last chunk where he was botching the response to the pandemic and you only include the first you know three years of his term business investment still only grew at five percent it still was short of what biden has been able to do and so business like the business community business leaders they can write super PAC checks to Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. They can, you know, talk about the need for less government relation, you know, regulation and how much they love having Republicans in the White House. But those are just words, right? Like that is that is them telling you when you look at what they do, what they are showing you is they are investing more in their businesses under Joe Biden's presidency than they were under Donald Trump's, right? So that's existing businesses are investing more in the last three years. What about businesses that are starting up? Right. Right. You want to talk about the epitome of the American dream. It is to have an idea and to to put, you know, throw out a shingle and, and put out your own stake and open up your own shop. When you look at new business starts in the U.S. economy under Joe Biden, an average of four hundred and forty four thousand Americans a month have started a new business a month for four hundred and forty four thousand a month. Under Donald Trump, it was just 304000 a month is what the new business starts averaged. And so whether it's existing businesses trying to grow, whether it is Americans with a dream trying to strike out on their own and start a new business, the numbers again favor Joe Biden. And so it, th- this is the – it's like it's like the caller said. I think it was Steve. We have a workhorse and we have a show horse. We have an economy that was just grinding and like, you know, is getting the job done. And we don't have a president leading that economy who loves to go out and pat himself on the back every day. Right. And probably it's like probably I can say that's a shortcoming of Joe Biden. He's not here to toot his own horn. He's here to say that the dignity of work is what matters, that the the men and women of organized labor, union members who are going to build the future in the transition to clean energy and renewable energy that they are the ones who this is about. That's not about him. But every time Donald Trump opens his mouth, it's talking about how he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And and he's the best ever. And he takes the slightest little policy win and just toots his own horn until he's blue in the face. I, it, that's the difference. He takes the he would take the wins, Joe. But if, if, if there's a loss, he takes no responsibility at all. Not exactly. at all. He can't, yeah, he and, can't lose. And I, and, I, and I think it's important for folks to remember, as you just said, do, if Donald Trump had this economy right now, he would be on television every day talking about his own greatness. This is and what he, I he did. Would. And, this is what I did for you because I am the best and I am the greatest and I am the businessman and I, 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 I did this for you. Yep. Instead, what we, we have maybe the funniest part of all of this, which is Donald Trump's new hot take on the U.S. economy. So if you go into the Wayback Machine, what Donald Trump said in 2020 was that if Joe Biden became president, the U.S. stock market would crash, oh, yep. that it yep. would just be down the tubes. Yes. <laughs> and, and now, last week, I think we had a run of like three or four consecutive days where the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit all-time highs. Literally, the stock market has never been <laughs> higher in American history. And that's leading to some awkward moments for Donald Trump, who, wizard of business that he claims to be, predicted that the stock market would crash. And so now he's on Truth Social suggesting that it's the Trump economy, even though he's been out of the White House for three years based solely on the fact that his polling is good and therefore they're pricing in a potential (laughs) Trump victory. I mean, it's, it's just insane in to everyone else. It's insane. But in the mind of Donald Trump, it apparently makes all the sense of the world and his his supporters will believe that as well. Steven's been very patient on the line uh, from green Bay. Steven, we got just a couple of minutes left. What did you want to say? Thanks for joining us. Uh, I, have, I have a couple things I want to say. The first thing I want to say is I want to shout out, shout out to you, Jane, and your show for bringing Kristen Meyer early on. I actually got the pleasure of meeting her last night personally, and I, I really think it's important that you keep bringing her on. Um, people need to hear about that because there's so many misconceptions in that realm of, of things. Well, thanks. Um, switching, 
switching to the current topic, uh, <laughs> it's almost like Republicans say they're going to do one thing, but then do the complete other when they mm-hmm. have to vote on it. And it's kind of funny that Republicans are really good about taking credit for things they had absolutely nothing to do with. <laughs> now, I, I want to remind people of something when it comes to Donald Trump that maybe we have all forgotten. Donald Trump was a Democrat. He was a New York Democrat that changed Republican because he knew he couldn't win as a Democrat, and he bet that the Republican base would be too stupid and would vote for him. He turned out to be right, um, but I'm sorry. I'm not going to go to the ballot box and vote for anyone that insults my intelligence and saying that's why he chose the party he chose in the first place. I, that's all I got to say. I appreciate it, Stephen. Thank you so very much for listening. You can always check in with us, too. 844-967-2789. We only have about a minute left, Joe, about 90 seconds. Anything else you want to wrap up with real quickly? Well, I'm just going to add that, you know, I understand that inflation is hitting folks. They're feeling it. And I'm here to tell you it's getting better. And I think people are noticing it. And what people ought to try to understand is that the policy choices that this administration made resulted in lower inflation than in other developed countries yes. like France, Britain, and Germany. So vis-a-vis the rest of the world, the American economy's comeback has been stronger and inflation has been lower. That's due to the steady hand of Joe Biden. Our political consultant and our friend Joe Zapecki, thank you so very, very much for joining us. We will see you again, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. And stay with us. News coming up next across the Civic Media Radio Network. Um. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, the surgeon of sound, Calvin on the board, coming to you from our studio in beautiful downtown Waukesha. You can always join us, call or text at 844-967-2789-844-96. Party. Or if you're watching on the live stream, leave a comment there as well on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. We just had Joseph Pecky on. We were comparing economic numbers the Biden administration versus the Trump administration. And if you look at that, if you look at those numbers, not how people feel, but if you look at the numbers, there's a pretty stark difference. The article that Joe was referring to, which will be in the show notes today after the program is done, actually is titled Data Don't Lie. And that's true. And I think one of the most important things to do is to to Look at his accomplishments in a pre-pandemic administration, too, because, yeah, of course, of course, the economy is going to tank quite a bit during a worldwide pandemic. But they didn't do much better in in, beforehand. So. So, yeah, I will put those I will put that story in the show notes. Take a look at it. Take a read and really take in the information because it's important. It's important. Had we. Had we had a Joe on longer, I would have asked him because I think it's important. Why, with all this record-breaking success as a president, I mean, by numbers alone, maybe one of the most successful presidents in 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 recent history, certainly in the first term. Yeah. <laughs> um, why is it then that there's such a such an image problem? Because he's not a he's not a not, he's not an unlikable guy. And I know his age is always brought into it. People talk about his, the fact that he has a problem with speaking, but he will, let's not forget. He does have a stutter. Right. But, and he but he's is, always been very honest about it. Yeah. So why, you know, why do we not have more enthusiasm for him? Is it because of misinformation, disinformation? Is it because we're not talking to the right people? Well, again, it's, it's people's individual lives and how this is impacting their lives. And Joe just kind of referenced it quickly at the end there. Inflation remains a problem. It is. But it's important for folks to realize that inflation in the U.S. is in far better, where is is under better control compared to all of the other European nations. Yeah. I mean, some of those countries had like 400 percent inflation. It was crazy. Yeah. This was a global pandemic. There were global implications. And globally, 
the U.S. is doing better than anybody else. So, and we've talked too about corporate greed. Yeah. Raising prices because they can. Mm -hmm. And then they don't necessarily bring them back down. The price of rent, the, the, the housing problems. But I don't know how you can look at it. You just blame all of that on the on the Biden economy. I think it's easy to do that because then you just don't have to. You, it's easy to blame one person or just one group of people because that precludes you then from actually doing the thinking about it too hard. The uh, research, doing the research yourself, as the, some people like to say. Um, and I think even you know, I think even inflation is a problem, but it's not in like. Economists have said that we have we have warded off major inflation over the past few months, and so for me, even still, that's even something else you can I don't want to say brag about tout toot your own horn. But again, I just don't see President Biden coming out in a press conference with a swaggering going. Yeah, I did that. You're all welcome. No, I'm not. It was saying, me. I I'm mean, not, I, I, I am I, not I, saying he do that. I, I know, but I, I do think that I do think the Democrats have, have a messaging problem that Absolutely. goes back a long way. Yeah. But part of that is, and we've talked about this, both being Wisconsin natives, all Wisconsin natives, we we're not braggy like that. Yeah, and he's, it's just it's a little unseemly. He's and, from Delaware. Delaware. They never shut up about themselves. <laughs> oh well, I'm just kidding. Maybe, Maybe he's unusual. A texter from the 414 said, it's just a darn shame that the fake news crowd will never hear this information. Well, that's why we're going to put it in the show notes. And it, you can share this. Yeah. You can share this with people on your lives. Just share, seriously, share it with one person who disagrees with them and say, look, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong. I just want you to read this. You're always telling me to do my own research. Here's some research for you. Just read this. Here's some numbers. And they will say this is a lie because it goes against what they're, they believe in. But at the end of the day, facts don't care about your feelings. No, they don't. We got a text from Lynn from Oconnell. Hello, Lynn. Lynn. Lynn, it's good to hear from you again. Uh, you said, I have, a, I have one comment regarding business investment. Business owners love consistency, and that's what we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Also, one question. What was and is the impact of Trump's tariffs, which is something we don't really talk about anymore. And those tariffs are still in place. Those tariffs are still in place. For those who don't remember, he waged a tariff war against China yes. in the first year of his term. And it it got bad. Prices are being prices are being raised because those countries don't pay for that. We, we pay for the raises and tariffs. And he has now gone on record saying that if he gets reelected, it's all happening again. And one of the things we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks is we're going to be bringing on individuals to talk about the effect of tariff wars or the effect of these prices going up, those effects directly falling into your wallet or purse. So, yeah. Tony Zimmerman has a comment on the live stream. How you feel about the economy is so personal, depending upon your specific circumstances, that the macro numbers just don't break through. And I agree. But that's why I also think it's important to remind people that in the last what, eight months of the Trump presidency, there was no toilet paper. What? Remember what things were like when we shut down in the pandemic and oh, grocery stores I, and what the situation was like yes, at grocery yes. stores? Sorry, I thought you meant in the literal Trump White House. Oh, like, well, there might not have been. No, but <laughs> but I, I mean, again, I, we, and I barely remember what I had for dinner two nights ago, so I understand that we forget these things, yeah. but I think it's important to remind folks what the economy was like at the end of the Trump administration. Oh gosh, yeah. It was a disaster. Yeah, it was. And that's what Joe Biden inherited. And, and this is where we are now. Yeah. Uh, Tony also says something very interesting. Maybe share the Matt and air on air live stream link talking about that article too. I Tony, good ideas all around friend. Good ideas. My and, gosh. And Papa Rico, a friend of mine lost his job during Trump's terms because of the steel tariffs. Yeah. And I think that was sold to the American people as tariffs are going to punish China. It's yeah. going to hurt them. It's going to hurt them. That's not how it works. I am not well versed enough to talk about tariffs specifically. So we're yeah. going to find an expert mm -hmm. who can help us break that down a little bit. Yep. But that will be coming in the next few weeks as well, because again, that's what Donald Trump is talking about now is increasing tariffs. Guess who paid for that wall? You did. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Well, yeah, it never got. Yeah, and that bill never got delivered. That's not, not quite so much. Yeah. Um, we're going to switch uh, topics just real quickly. 
and I'm I'm sorry to to see this, and it doesn't surprise me. But uh, in today's Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Greg Borowski has announced that starting tomorrow, they will no longer allow comment functions in the articles on JS Online. Now they have been curating these for a while. I want to say at least the last couple of years. They wouldn't allow comments on particular stories because of the vitriol yeah. and the profanities and the unhingedness. The racism. And the, the, the misogyny, the homophobia. The transphobia. And unfortunately, in this article from Greg Borowski in today's Journal Sentinel, he says, so we shut it down on a lot of the political stories. Well, then, unfortunately, those same people just moved over to sports and entertainment so they would have somewhere else to leave their horrible, misogynistic, racist, homophobic comments. And I mentioned something before before the show started when you told me about this that you know, I kind of had an incredulous response like, oh, my gosh. And then you said because it takes them literally hours to comb through all of these comments to get rid of all the poison and trash to leave the ones that really make any sort of difference. Right. When in all essence, most comments on a story don't make quote unquote a difference. You might like say something that connects with you, but do there need to be comments on stories? Honestly, do there need to be, it was, it was a place for people to engage. And, yeah. it, right. And, and, you know, share some different points of view potentially, but again, keyboard warriors and you can hide behind whatever. And that gives you free reign to say yeah. whatever horrible thing you want. Uh, Again, in this article, you might read comments and think it's mild stuff, but if you get, take a look at what gets caught in the filters, you would be appalled, Greg Borowski says. Our readers, real people in our community who take the time to share their views, are called racist names and labeled child molesters. Yep. It is disgusting. No one should have to read through that, least of all a staffer who is taking valuable time to go through this queue of flagged comments, a journalist who would otherwise be writing stories, doing background research, editing video, shooting shooting uh, photos. They're not supposed to be hallway monitors. Yeah. We got a text from Andrew from Maine saying, how often do you read through comments on stories? I do maybe 25% of the time. I never do because always don't read the comments. Because they're, there's so much nastiness. There's so much nastiness, and 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 if there's some good stuff in there, that's fine. But it's it's not worth. I'm not I'm not going to try to pick a diamond out of out of the mess. Yeah, right. And but it it just can't we at least behave like adults, people? They are in their minds. They're that's using slurs and you know racist and homophobic and misogynistic tropes. That's. That's being an adult. That's being an, a, a free love and freedom, American freedom, or because they get to they get to say whatever they want. And that's the hallmarks of freedom to them. Literally, that what what it means to some of them. They being get to able say to say what, what whatever horrible thing they want. Yes. Yep. But I go back to, if all you have insults, you have no argument. Well, you also operate on a different level than they do, so I wouldn't expect them to understand that kind of thinking. Really. Yeah, they would just look at you as a as a snowflake SJW woman. Oh well, who's trying to strike against me right there? Who's trying to debank men? <laughs> so get out of my freedom. If you want to join us, eight four four nine six seven two seven eight nine. You can call or text eight four four nine six seven. 2789 or leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Tom, joining us again from LA. What's up, Tom? What do you want to say? Thanks. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry about this, Jane. I mean, calling twice, but you know what? The way that you solve this problem is you make people put their real first and last names down as their um, uh, emoji or whatever it might be. They have to put their first name and their last name, um, you know, before they post anything. They got to own it, right? Would, yeah. You, you got to own it. Yep, they own it that way. Yep. Exactly. So, no, you're right, Tom. But I think, too, that once, if that's going to be the case, then they're never going to comment again. Yeah. And when I was on with Todd Alba last week on his show for about a half an hour, and I mentioned, I used to worry, when I, worked, when I, when I started here in Milwaukee, I started overnights. 
Every weirdo in the world calls you at 3.30 in the morning. I used to worry about what happened to all the obscene phone callers because yeah. with caller ID, you can't do that anymore. They all became keyboard warriors. Yeah. All the people who used to be the heavy breathers <laughs> calling me at 3.30 in the morning saying disgusting things. Those people are now the ones who are leaving these horrible, horrible comments in online forums. Uh, Mark from Prairie Dusac, just a couple of minutes left. Mark, what did you want to say? Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and the keyboard warriors out there now, and you see them posting their, you know, letters to the editor. Sometimes are actually kind of, kind of ignorant comments as as well. I mean that, uh, it is just. Uh, I mean, the trope that I've seen lately is complaining about the snow removal service in the city of Madison, and uh, after you get dumped on with a massive amount of snow, and the weather doesn't improve, the weather stays cold. You know, you can have problems with with hard pack on the. Hard pack is, is virtually impossible to get rid of unless you dump tons of salt on it. But the salt you dump on, if it's too cold, the ice is not going to melt anyway. That and with the warm weather we're having, all this, the streets are going to be clear by the end of the week. I mean that, and that's just unusual for January, February anyway. That it just uh, there's always something to complain about, and that uh, yeah, and people we we as as a species, uh, Mark, we we really do love to gripe. Yeah, I think it's what you know. It's a it's a part time hobby for a lot of us. Thank you so very much for calling. Uh, we stay with us when we return. Yeah, don't don't donate this to Goodwill. It's <laughs> it's probably not a good idea. All the details on the way. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. And welcome, welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin is on the board. We're coming to you live from downtown Waukesha. You can always join us no matter where you are listening in Green Bay on WBGW or in La Crosse on the Eagle. There you go. On WLCX. Or if you're watching on the live stream, leave a comment there too on Facebook, YouTube, and or Twitter. We were just talking Economy, economic numbers, and uh, we had a comment from Tiffany. How people view the economy, families have much different view of it when 26% of their household income goes to daycare. No question about it. Yeah. Daycare, Tiffany says, is infrastructure, and it needs to be funded as so. And I think you're absolutely right. There needs to be more assistance, and certainly if we want to encourage women to be having more children, <laughs> I don't know. That seems like that might, might tie into the whole reluctance of, uh, of having bigger families. <laughs> we get a text from Andrew, a couple of them from Andrew from Maine saying, we we, uh, we were told we couldn't swear as kids, so we we're swearing we must be adults now, right? And then he said, you could also invite them to sit in the studio and share their views and take live calls. Uh, no. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I want to engage in good faith conversations. Yeah. I want to engage in good faith dialogue. Yeah. But that actually means listening yeah. to people and not yelling at them and not swearing at them and not insulting them. Jane's talking about me right now. Oh, he's so difficult. You have no I'm very, di- I'm, I'm hard-headed. <sighs> anyway, uh, 844-967-2789. Uh, I teased this a little bit, and I think it's just a useful reminder Police in Ashland, Wisconsin, got called to a goodwill there because someone donated a World War II grenade that was live. That donation was the bomb. Uh, Literally, it was the bomb. Um, They took a look at the suspected grenade and agreed it was factual. So they they brought in the bomb squad, the Marathon County Bomb Squad, it was identified as a Japanese Type 99 grenade from World War II. Apparently, they couldn't tell from the photo it was if it was live or not. But if you find a grenade, should you not just always assume that it's live? Yeah, I think that's a reasonable assumption. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't... So, just a small reminder as you're going through your closet or your 
garage or your grandparents' attic. If you find a grenade, don't take it to Goodwill. No. I would call your local police department. It's probably a good start. And then call any older living relative and say, why? <laughs> why, Uncle Fritz? Did you save this grenade from why'd World you, War II? Why did you pick Fritz for the name? That just came to me. That's my dad's name. I like Fritz. is a great name. A, yeah. Uh, Jam is on the line from Racine. Thank you for holding Jam, and thank you for listening. What did you want to? What did you want to say? Hi. Good morning. Um, speaking of not bad behavior, but different behavior that's coming from people nowadays, as far as uh, just opinions, just uh, hatred, vitriol behind the keyboard. They had a example of it for four years of bad behavior with no consequences with what's going on right now with Mr. You know, who, you know, the consequences of all that bad behavior, there was no, or there is no punishment and everyone's entitled. And it's, you know, I mean, so that's why he could never, ever, 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 I became swift before. Wow. Okay. Um, he could never be in office again. I mean, if people don't just see that, Realize what's ahead, the real dangers and threats. I don't, I don't see why people just don't see that the economy's great right now. Things are, things are going. Jeb, well. can you turn your radio down a little bit because we're getting a kickback echo here. I think you have your radio up in the background, so we're we're getting a little re, re, repeat. Can you hear me now? That's better. There we go. That's better. I think you know, Jam. To answer the question, why don't people see that the economy is doing so well? We've talked about it before on the show. The economy isn't a personal thing in the long run. It's how the, the money affects the, the country, you know, wh whether we're talking about jobs, job creation, growth, but they've made it such a personal game that if people don't see their pay rise, the pay rising, if they don't see a bigger house, a better car, just more money in their pocket, they think the economy sucks because they see it from a very self, not self-centered, because well, we can all be like that. But like looking inward instead of how is the health of the country overall. versus the, the health of you and your family. Right. And when you have people out there saying the economy sucks, the economy sucks, and it's this guy's fault, eventually they're going to get themselves believers. And, they're, and that's why they'll never believe you when you say the economy is healthy because they have the same car in the driveway, they have the same job, the same house, and they don't see how it affects them personally. That's, that's those that are expecting someone else to rise them up above a certain level. You know, mm -hmm. we have, we all have to just get out there and try to do the best we can or yeah. what we can stop listening to all the rhetoric. Like, you know, if you're living good right now, you got a roof over your head, things are kind of, you know, real good or whatever. Like the millionaires are becoming billion trillionaires while all these are we're suffering. What's, I mean, no one looks at that. Look at yeah. the fraud, yeah. the person that they worship really, is a fraud. He's not. He doesn't have all that money. Well, and let's not forget, Jam. I'm um, Jam. He he went. I mean, he bankrupted casinos, which is almost a special gift. Yeah. You have to work really hard to bankrupt a casino. A casino when the house typically always wins. Yeah. So that that was quite an accomplishment in and of itself. So congratulations. Thank, I, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Jam, thank you so very much for listening. All right. Busy hour. Very busy. busy first hour. It went fast. It did go fast. When uh, news is coming up next, and when we return, we are going beyond the cheese, Greg Bach. We need a theme. We're going beyond the cheese. We're going to learn about a very important, another very important industry that's in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how big of a producer we are of this product. So we've got all the details it's coming pretty, up. It's a pretty sticky situation. It's going to be a little sticky and a little sweet. Stay close. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. Never